we are talking about the power of discernment and how our ability to, to discern must have a greater place in our lives. Right now we hear something from the Spirit, our five senses uh, attack it, our reason attacks it, and we, we have to be able to understand that this warfare between the flesh and the spirit is the, the natural five senses are not negative, they're not mean, they're not nasty. We need to have the five senses. But the five senses job is to logically feed us the kinds of information we need in order to make decisions. But here's the problem. Our five senses put us in touch with this world. But our spirit puts us in touch with the spirit world. Our five senses are constantly feeding us data. Information is constantly coming into our mind via the five senses. Our minds then discern it, figure it out, analyze it, and make a decision based on what we receive from the five senses. But that's only half the equation. What happens now whenever our spirit also begins to give us data? What happens when our spirit begins to feed our minds with information that we didn't have before either? Now our minds have the information fed to us from the five senses, but now it has spiritual information, information given to us by our spirit as it is in touch with the spirit realm. Now, the argument and the struggle is in the mind. We have been taught for a million years that we have to ignore the five senses, ignore the natural, and embrace the spiritual. We have to understand, like I said before, that the five senses are given to us for a very real purpose. There are many times when I have no sense of the spirit. I have no idea if something is right or wrong. So using the, the information from the five senses makes sense because then we can make decisions based on, on the information that we're receiving. But as we learn to become spiritual people and we are in tune more with the realm of the spirit, we can expect to be receiving a whole new stream of information fed to us from the realm of spirit into our souls, into our minds, that will help us understand how to live and how to make the most important decisions of our lives that we need to make. Now let me read a scripture for a moment, please. This is from Hebrews chapter 5. Uh, beginning with verse 12. For by this time you ought to be teachers. You have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. What are the elementary principles of the oracles of God? We'll find out in a minute. Uh, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food is for the mature who because of practice have their, their senses trained to discern good and evil. One translation says, have their senses trained so that they learn to discern. Now, it's very interesting. Then this, the, the beginning with uh, ver chapter 6, verse 3, Hebrew says, Therefore, leaving the elementary teachings about the Christ, let us press on to maturity. What are the elementary teachings about the Christ? Now this is where it gets tough. We don't want to lay again a foundation of repentance from dead works, faith toward God, instructions about washings, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. What is the issue here? The issue is here all of these things are foundational. And yet in most of our churches, most of our books, most of our understanding deals almost exclusively with these issues. Let's press on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works, uh, from uh, faith towards God. We want to leave teachings on faith toward God? We don't leave them, 
but at some point they should be established in our hearts does that mean we don't sin no does that mean we don't need faith no does that mean uh, we don't have to repent no but it does mean that these become such an important all the time experience in our hearts that we know how to do this and uh, our leaders the teachers the pastors at some point have to say you know what we got to do more than what we've done we've got to take the church beyond these elementary foundations and we must walk into maturity we must take them to the place where the rubber really meets the road or shall I say where the bone meets the marrow or where the flesh meets the spirit where my spirit touches God's spirit we must get on with the business of establishing the kingdom of God by letting him live his life through us and knowing what he feels and having a spirit of discernment is primary is key I just don't want to do things for God I want to do things of God I just don't want to do something because it's a good thing to do I want to do the things that are on God's heart for me to do I want to make decisions based on the information I get from my five senses and from the Holy Spirit both sources are important and both sources help us to understand the decision-making process so therefore leaving the elementary teachings about Christ let us press on to maturity not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and the faith toward God of instructions about washings of laying on of hands what you mean Pentecostal stuff is foundational yeah you know, too many of us still believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a reward for leading a good life when the baptism of the Holy Spirit isn't a reward at all the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a tool that God will use to restore you heal you strengthen you teach you empower you to fulfill the destiny he has for you not a gift it's a tool we're going to stop talking, we're going to move beyond the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this we will do, the writer says, if God permits. How does God permit? We have to grow up. We have to begin to train ourselves to hear from the Spirit and to have such an awareness of the Spirit that we can accept what the Holy Spirit says you know we are taught so much about the written word that we sometimes forget the living word the written word is an expression of he who lives John says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God all things were made through him and apart from him nothing was made that was made in him is life and that life is the light of men the greatest thing we can do is to give our spiritual input the same amount of credibility as we give our natural input unfortunately that's not what we're taught we are taught that the spirit has to line up with what we know or what we understand or it can't be God what would have happened see l l let me put it this way our doctrines have become so set in stone that we confuse doctrine with the word of the Lord we uh, confuse doctrine with the Bible I might not believe what you believe in a particular issue uh, I might not share your doctrine so because I don't share your doctrine am I a heretic is your doctrine the word are you certain 